Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You and welcome to part two of the Grand Underground where we're basically going to be going over all the Pokemon hideaways and the Pokemon that spawn here. Basically there are 203 Pokemon spawns that are here in the Grand Underground. We're going to be going over every single thing from the spots of the Underground, the Pokemon hideaways of the Underground, to the Pokemon themselves, to what causes them to spawn, the levels of them. There's a lot of stuff in the video so make sure you're checking out all the timestamps down below and don't skip the beginning part because it's very vital information and once you get through that you can skip to any part of the video that talks about whatever biome you're looking for or whatever pokemon be sure to like this video if this content helps you out and subscribe for more content like this but now let's get on into the grand underground video i am excited let's go a quick refresher from the last video the grand underground is broken up into six different parts you have the northeast the northwest the southeast, the southwest, the big area that runs from east to west, and the dead center area of the underground. You can access the big center area from just entering into Eterna City and getting the Grand Underground Toolkit. You go down and you can basically explore everything in this area around the center. You cannot go in the center yet. You can also go back to your starting town or twin leaf town and explore this entire area. So you get to explore the southwest as well in the beginning of the game. Later on, you'll get access to this area. This is where Cynthia's grandmother is in Celestic Town. And then you're going to be able to access all the top area here, the northwest part, which is basically Snow Point City, giving you access to these beautiful ice biomes in the underground, followed by going to your eighth badge, which will bring you to this part, the southeast part, which is going to be accessible via Sunny Shore City. Finally, the northeast part is accessible just by going to the post game area. This is the fight area, survival area and you'll be able to encounter a lot of fire areas in this corner. That's basically just a breakdown of the map, but before we get on into the whole Pokemon hideaway stuff, I need to tell you guys some very important information, so please pay attention to this. Now, this chart I have on screen is something you need to commit to memory. When you first go into the Grand Underground, you might think it's super random, but it's actually not. The gym badges basically tell you the levels of the Pokemon that you'll find in the Grand Underground. Number one gym badge being level 16 to level 20. Two, 25 to 29. What a jump already. Three, 29 to 33. Four, 33 to 37. Five, 36 to 40. Six, 39 to 43. Seven, 42 to 46. Eight, 50 to 55. And when you defeat the Elite Four and become champion, you basically have it at 58 to 63. So quite the level jump in the game and i also like to make a quick note i do like farming in the grand underground as opposed to the overworld because i notice i get too overpowered so i just go down here and, and farm on these guys and get much more experience now let's talk about how to get new pokemon spawns in the ground underground now as you can see we have these one two three four five six numbers here these are flags in the game which basically tell you if you accomplish this task or do this thing in the game will give you access to more new pokemon that will start spawning in the grand underground the first one is actually none. You just have to be in the game and go to the Grand Underground for the first time, and you'll get a certain pool of Pokemon that reflect the number one. When you acquire strength, that access you to get the flag number two, and you'll start to see more Pokemon on top of the ones you already had in one. Getting Defog, will again, will let you do more as this is the third step. You'll get all the Pokemon from this step and the Pokemon from the previous step. Getting the seventh badge gives you the fourth unlock where the fourth flag starts to trigger and you get more Pokemon that show up. Five is Waterfall. This is basically at the end of completing the eighth badge and right before the Elite Four, you're going to get Waterfall and that's going to give you more Pokemon to unlock. The biggest one of them all that I highly suggest everyone does is complete the regional decks so that you can unlock the national decks. The moment you unlock the national decks, you get access to a whole plethora of Pokemon within the national decks itself. The Grand Underground just feels so filled at this point. Okay, let's move on. So here is a picture of the Grand Underground and all the Pokemon hideaways or biomes that you see within it. But to make your lives easier, take a screenshot of this map and I'm going to pull up the key that we've created over here on this chart and then you're going to screenshot this or take notes on it. So the green one, that's light green, is known as the Grassland Cave. Very simple, very green. You can assume that there's gonna be quite a bit of grass Pokemon here. The blue one here is known as Fountain Spring Cave. It's very blue, it looks like water, so expect water type Pokemon here. You have a light brown one, Spacious Cave, so expect some sandy rock Pokemon to be here. Then you have the Riverbank Cave, which is a combination of the Grassland Cave and the Fountain Spring Cave. Going on down, we have the Dazzling Cave, which is the purple cave. This is my favorite one. It's probably the coolest biome 
has a lot of crystals very cool looking stuff you have the icy cave known as the glacial cavern you have the whiteout cave which is also here these both are in the north part of the map and you have the swampy cave which is mucky and gross and you can assume there's a lot of poison pokemon here you got the volcanic cave hot spot for fire pokemon and the rocky cave which is much more smoother sand looking cave then you have the sand seer cave which is a combination of these two the volcanic cave and the rocky cave and that's pretty much all the biomes just listed out for you now let's go through each biome and look at the very important Pokemon that you can get at each progression. Real quick before we get into that. The Grand Underground is very important when it comes to Pokemon with egg moves. For example, you can find Chimchars down here that know Thunder Punch. I think that's pretty huge and a lot of other Pokemon with special egg moves. So pay attention to that no matter how crappy the Pokemon may be. They might have an egg move that you can pass on down a Pokemon that you may like. Another important tip in the Grand Underground is to keep going in and out of certain rooms to refresh the Pokemon that spawn in the room. The moment you go back out, the Pokemon are going to reset. You come back into the room again, as you can see in this quick clip, and the Pokemon should be back here. There you go. We have different Pokemon showing up. So you can do this in every single room to get different spawns if the ones you're looking for aren't available. The first biome that we're going to be looking at is the Spacious Cave. Now, flag one is going to be all the Pokemon you can get right away. So just refer back to the other part of the video where I explain all the flags. The flag one Pokemon that you can find down here are pretty basic with Badoof, Badoo, Bunnery, Geodude, Krikatot, Machop, Pachirisu, Psyduck, Shinx, Zubat. You get Murkrow if you have Brilliant Diamond. But the important Pokemon to find in this area are Absol, Houndoom, which is a dark fire type. And if you pick Piplup or Turtwig, Houndoom is definitely a must Pokemon to get in this area. Lickitung, not too hot on that one. Magnemite's a really cool electric Pokemon to have. Rhydon as well as it gets its third evolution, Rhyperior. Swablu, dragon type Pokemon that you can get early game. So you can already have Swablu in your party. I know it's normal flying right now, but it will eventually become dragon type. Flag number two, you get Biribo, Chingling, Golbat, Hoot Hoot, and Brilliant Diamond, only Skunk Tank and Stunky. Flag number three, Apom. Pretty cool Pokemon to have. Graveler and Machoke, which you can just trade to get the evolved forms of. And Munchlax, which is a huge deal because Munchlax you can only find in honey trees at a 1% chance. So when you're down here, you definitely want to grab that Munchlax. Wingo is also here. Hergly, which is a Shining Pearl exclusive. Then you got Luxio, Pelipper, Glamiel that spawn in, on flag four. Not too big of a deal. Mantike starts spawning here at five. Really weird place for Mantike to show up. And when you get access to the national deck, you start to see your crab Pokemon. Farfetch is here, not Surfetch, but Farfetch, the OG one. Get some Krabbies. Mariana is a cool Pokemon to have. It's Dark Dalgo. You got Natu, the psychic flying type of Gen 2. Puchia here, the pre evolution. Primate's a cool fighting Pokemon. Nothing too powerful here. Rhydon, if you just want to go from Rhydon to Rhyperior, is a great Pokemon to have. You have your Tyrogue here, which has three evolutions. Hitmon Top, Hitmon Chen, and Hitmon Lee. So go ahead, catch three Tyrogues here. Maybe have some luck with that. Uh, you can also get a Voltorb here, Zizagoon. Nothing too crazy, but when you get to the exclusives, getting a Growlithe in Brilliant Diamond is a big deal. Uh, Bagon, Sandshu, Sandslash, and Shellgon in Shining Pearl. Those are the exclusives for that one. I'm pretty jealous that Shining Pearl gets Bagon. That is really cool. You guys get a Dragon here, but it's going to be at the National Dex part of the game. Shining Pearl also gets... Slowpoke, Teddy Ursa, Vulpix, and Weedle. So they're definitely winning in this area. Definitely with that Vulpix. I love Vulpix turning into Ninetales with that nice evolution. Oh, feels good. But this is pretty much all there is for the Spacious Cave. The second cave on the list is known as the Grassland Cave. Now, Grassland Cave has some basic Pokemon spawning at the beginning. Nothing too crazy. A lot of repeated Pokemon names that you originally saw here. You also have access to Combi down here. Rosilia is here as well. Um, you got Murkrow. That is a Brilliant Diamond exclusive. Scrolling down the list, you can get both Silcoon and Cascoon. I think that's pretty big as you can get both those evolutions early. Absol also appears here as a very rare spawn. And if you have Brilliant Diamond, you get access to Scyther. Scyther is a really good False Swiper and can eventually evolve into Caesar. And if you're playing Shining Pearl, you get access to Pincers. So go ahead, grab those two Pokemon, maybe trade them to each other. But this is definitely really cool to have at the beginning of the game. Flag number two accesses some Pokemon I really, really don't care about. A brilliant diamond exclusive of Skunk Tank, Stunky. Also, apologies to anyone who I say we don't really care about. If your favorite Pokemon 
happens to be Bidu's evolution, I am very sorry. You also get access to Machoke here that you can evolve. Munchlax again spawns here, so grab that Munchlax as it is a very important Pokemon that spawns in the Honey Tree at a 1% chance. Kergly is also going to spawn here in Shining Pearl only. And then when we get to the National Dex, you'll get access to Area Dose. The Grass Starters all spawn in this area. So you get Bulbasaur, you'll see Chikorita here. You'll also be seeing some Poison Pokemon like the Nidorans. You'll be seeing, where are they? Let's scroll down here. A lot of Pokemon here. You get access to Turtwig and Trico as well. And then you can see there's tons of grass Pokemon. They mix a lot of poison Pokemon and bug Pokemon on this list. By the way, feel free to screenshot this list at any time as I'm making this video. Um, Brilliant Diamond exclusives count as Caterpie, Ekans, Kecleon, Nuzleaf, Seedot, Zangoose. And then if you have Shining Pearl, your Pokemon are going to be Lombre, Lotad, Surviper, Slowpoke, Teddy Ursa, and Weedle. So Teddy Ursa is in this area. Uh, you can notice there's a lot of Pokemon that are starting to repeat. That's why I mentioned that this video is all about 203 Pokemon that spawn here. So this is minusing all the duplicates that we're going to be talking about in this video. But it's just good knowledge to know what you're going to get in each of these areas. This cave is known as the Fountain Spring Cave. As you can see, it is a very beautiful tropical looking biome there's pokemon that can spawn on the ground they can spawn in the water when you go ahead and surf but let's go ahead and see what pokemon you can get when you first come here pokemon that you can get when you first come here are bidoof boozio gastrodon's a big one and some rare pokemon here on this list are ralts ralts is a big deal swablu is a big deal Togepi is a big deal, and Lickitung. Mostly in this area, I would say Ralts and Togepi. Ralts because you can get a Gardevoir early game, and you can get a Togepi, which is a fairy type, and that gives you an early fairy type Pokemon to start your playthrough of this game with. Second flag on this list unlocks Barboach, Barabelle, Hoot Hoot. That's really it. The third flag gets you Quagsire, Wingle, and Wooper. The fourth flag is when things start to get interesting as you get access to Gibble which is a dragon type Pokemon. So you can have a Gibble from pretty much early game, which is really amazing. You get access to Pelipper, Tentacool, Tentacool, not too big of a deal. When you get the next flag, the fifth flag, you get access to Gabite. And Gabite's roaming wild are super cool to look at. It's not normal that you get to see them. You also get access to Mantike, Octillery, and Whizcash. Finally, when you unlock the National Dex, you get access to Pokemon like Carvana, Corphish, Corsola, Crawdant, you get Dratini, which is a dragon type Pokemon, the OG one that becomes Dragonite, a super hot Pokemon to get down here. You also get Horsey, which becomes another dragon type Pokemon at Kingdra. And then you go down the list and you can start to notice some starters here like Mudkip, Piplup, you can see Squirtle on this list as well, and you can see Totodile. You can get all your water starters from this specific cave. You can just hang out in here, catch as many as you want, they all come with egg moves as well, so it's a really great place to hunt your water starters down here. It also has some very shining pearl specific Pokemon like Lombre, Lotad, and Slowpoke. Unfortunately for us Brilliant Diamond people, we can't get those Pokemon here. The next cave on this list is the Riverbank Cave, which is a mix of the grassy one and the Fountain Spring Cave that we previously were in. Now, Riverbank can have a mix of both the Pokemon that you've seen earlier. And as you can see on the list on the left, a lot of the Pokemon spawn here that you've already seen in other biomes here. Something to note is a Krogunk that has appeared in this area. You have rare Pokemon like Lickitung, Scyther, and Pinsir, so that's not anything different. You got Barboach, Birbo, Hoot Hoot that appear on flag number two. Same thing you saw, Skunk Tank, Stunky. Munchlax has also spawned here. Wingle, Purgly for Shining Pearl. King Gibble here is really cool as it is a dragon type Pokemon. I mean, eventually, if you see a lot of dragon type Pokemon, you will get bored, but it is very exciting to see them for the first time. Going down the list, you also have Gabite that can spawn here at a later flag, Octillery, Whizcash. When you get the National Dex, you can have literally access to both every water starter and every single grass starter from generations one to four. I think that's what makes this cave really fun. So if you want to hunt both grass and water starters, this is the cave to go to. Uh, we'll go down this list. You can see Bulbasaur, Chikorita. You can see Horsia, which you can become a dragon. You got your Mudkip, your Nidorans, Piplup, Poliwhirls, Crowfish, Rattata. Shuckles here. Shuckles pretty cool. Squirtle, Staryu, Trico, Turtwig, Totodile. You got your Tyrogue here as well. Caterpie, your exclusives. Ekans, Kecleon, Nuzleaf, Seedot, Solrock for Brilliant Diamond. And then for your Shining Pearl, you got your Lombre, Lotad, Lunatone, 
pincer slow poke weedle so you can see a really big combination mix when it comes to this area but i think the real really noticeable part is the fact that you can just hang out in this mixed cave and get every single grass and water starter this next biome is known as the swampy cave as you can see it looks disgusting to be in and you can see a lot of poison type pokemon you got a wheezing over here but the pokemon that we're going to talk about are the ones you see at the beginning of the game so flag one you can see Krogunk, roselia scorpy zubat and rare pokemon that are here are lickitung most notably swinub that's a big one and gligar so if you're going for a swinub or a Gligar, this is the spot. Unfortunately for Shining Pearl people, you don't get Gligar. It is a brilliant diamond Pokemon only. When you get Flag 2, you get access to Barboach and Golbat. Flag 3, Quagsire and Wooper, not too big of a deal. Flag 4, Tentacool, Tentacruel, you can find them in the overworld. So just extra Pokemon that you don't really need to spawn here. Number 5 Flag, you get Whizcash that starts roaming in the water. And when you unlock the National Dex, you get access to some really cool Pokemon like area dose you get your grass starter bulbasaur in this area cacturn gloom grimer just all these poison pokemon really important one are getting the nidorans which basically evolve into your nido king and nido queen so that's awesome to get in this area tangrowth is a final evolution of tangrowth so that's dope you get tropius as well in this area which is a grass flying type going down the list you got a wheezing it's not as cool as galarian wheezing but it's a wheezing now some version exclusive pokemon on this list you can see Caterpie, Ekans, and Zangoose are brilliant diamond exclusive. And Surviper and Weedle are literally going to be just Shining Pearl exclusive. So these are the Pokemon that you can find in the Swampy Cave. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking biomes, the Dazzling Cave. When you first walk in here, I mean, it reminds me of that Sword and Shield town with all the glowing mushrooms, just glowing crystals here. It's beautiful. It's a very beautiful biome. In this biome, you'll be able to catch Pokemon like Ghastly, Mistrevious, you can grab rare Absols, Duskull. So ghost Pokemon, this is the spot for ghost Pokemon, by the way. You can see a lot of dark ghost psychic Pokemon. You can get a Ralts. Smoochum is here as well, ice psychic Pokemon. You get Togepi in this area as well. A Lekkid is also down here, but it's only going to be in Brilliant Diamond. Other Pokemon to note in this area are Bronzor, Chingling, Meditite Giraffing, you get a nice Kadabra down here. So just grab Kadabra, trade that for an Alakazam. Mr. Mime, another Absol repeated down here as you get the National Dex. You get Baltoy, Banette, another ghost type. Cubone, interesting that they throw Cubone here because of the ghost origin story. You also can find Dittos down here and it's just so cool to find a little pink blob just running around, but it is pretty rare to see. I, I don't really notice Ditto that often down here. You find Pokemon like Drowsy, Dusclops, Duskull, Grimer, another Houndoom repeated here, the evolution of Ralts, some strange Pokemon that appear here are Krabby, Mariana, Natu, some, nothing really too interesting. Their, their names seem to repeat on this data sheet for some reason. Malwow is a very good one that spawns for Brilliant Diamond, Soul Rock, Brilliant Diamond, Zangoose, and then for Shining Pearl, again, they threw a bag on here, Lunatone, Sableye. If you're Shining Pearl, you can find Sableye. That's pretty big for Ghost type. You get Surviper, Shellgun also appears here on Shining Pearl, and Slowpoke. This is an exclusive biome to the north area by Snowpoint City. It is known as the Whiteout Cave. Over here, you'll find Bunnery, Machop, Pachirisu, Shinx, Glalie, Magnemite, Smoochum, Snowrunt, Swablu, Swinub, Elekid, and Teddy Ursa. I think the big one to grab here is Elekid. I don't know why he's hanging out in the snow, but he's here, and it's a pretty rare Pokemon to get. Other Pokemon to note here are Meditite, Machoke. You get access to Munchlax here as well. Luxio, Mr. Mime, Sneasel, Snover, Aaron, Beldum. Delibird is here. That's pretty cool. Beldum can become Metagross, so that's a grab. Flaffy can become Ampharos. Spirit, not too much of a fan of. Larion, get, get yourself an Agron. You got Tauros, Tyrogue. We've talked about this in another biome. Dugong, Seal, Celio, Sphio. And uh, that's pretty much it. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is another icy biome that's very similar to this one. When you first come into an icy cave, you get access to Bunnery, Glalie, Magnemite, Spoochum, Snowrunt, Swablu. There's already a lot of rare Pokemon when you enter it. And Swinub. So Snowrunt's a big one to note here. Glalie's a good one. And Smoochum. When you unlock more flags, you start to see Bronzor, Mr. Mime, 
at four, Sneasel, Snover, and then as you unlock the national decks, you then start to see Aaron, which becomes Agron. You see Beldum, which becomes Metagross. Those are two big ones that you want to catch when you're up here. You got Larion, which is the second evolution of a Aaron. You have Lantern, Mariana, Puchia, Staryu, Tauros, Walrin, and then Dugong, Seal, Celio, Sphiel, and then you have a Teddy Ursa. You have a teddy bear randomly in here for some reason. I don't know why. It's not a snow bear, but you do have a teddy bear in here. This area is known as the Rocky Cave. And as you can see already, you're starting to see Rocky Pokemon in this area. So some of the Pokemon that you'll be seeing are Geodude, Onyx, Scorpy, Rhydon, Gligar, if you have Brilliant Diamond, and Teddy Ursa, if you have Shining Pearl, Bronzor, Graveler, Hippolytus. Um, Aaron's another big Pokemon. We talked about this. Beldum you can grab over here. Camera up, you get Cubones in this area. Larion's to become Agron. Fanfi, Fanfi's pretty cool to get here. It's pretty unique in this area. You have Shuckle as well. You can get Trap Inch in this area. That's pretty cool. You got Vibrava, which is your ground dragon. Zizagoon, not too big. And then you have Larvitar here, which only appears in Brilliant Diamond, unfortunately. So you can get a Tyranitar, super dope if you have Brilliant Diamond. Uh, Pupitar also shows up in this area. Sand Shrew and Sand Slash, if you have Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond definitely wins in this area because of Larvitar. And then um, that's that's pretty much it. That's your Rocky Cave spawns. So go ahead and hunt your Larvitars definitely in this area if you have Brilliant Diamond. And hey, be nice to some Shining Pearl people and trade them your Larvitar. This area is known as the Volcanic Cave. As you can tell, it's a fiery looking area. So you can assume there's going to be fire type Pokemon in this place. As you can see on the list, we have Pokemon that appear like Geodude, Onyx, Scorpy, Houndoom, which has shown up on the screen, and Magby for those who have Shining Pearl. Brilliant Diamond gets Elect Kid, and Shining Pearl gets Magby. You also can get Ponyta here, which you can find in the overworld, not too hot. Graveler, Camerupt here, and did you know that you can get every single fire starter in the game in this area? You can get Charmander here, Chimchar, Cyndaquil, and Torchic. Other Notable Pokemon that you can get are Macargo, Slugma, Torkoal, Growlithe you can get if you have Brilliant Diamond, Vulpix you have Shining Pearl, and that's pretty much the list for the Volcanic Cave. I think the main part of this hunt area is for the fire starters. So come over here, grab fire starters, grab some egg moves because that's what it's all about when it comes to Pokemon in the Grand Underground. The next Pokemon hideaway slash biome is the Sansir Cave, which is pretty much a mix of the volcanic biome with the rocky ones. As you can see, both elements are in this area. Now, if we go down this list, you can see we got Onyx, Scorpy. Rare spawns include Houndoom, Rhyhorn, Magby, if you have Shining Pearl, Ponyta, Hippodes, Camerupt. You can also get all the starters here because, it, of course, it is a mix of the other biomes. So you be sure to grab a Charmander, Chimchar, Cyndaquil and Torchic here. You also can get a Macargo, Rhydon, Growly, Trapage, I mean, Sandshrew, Sandslash, and Vulpix for Shining Pro only. I mean, that's pretty much it. You'll feel like a lot of the things are repeating down here once you start to realize that the underground is pretty much just 203 unique Pokemon. So guys, there it is. You are now complete masters of the Grand Underground. If you watched our first video and then you've watched the second video, you now know everything. I literally mean you know everything about the Grand Underground. Hopefully you guys can grab the Pokemon that you want to find and know when to find them to build on your teams to get you through this game. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and please subscribe for all the videos we're making here. It's definitely worth it. You're going to see a lot more content like this. Please subscribe. It's free. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who just hit that button right now. As I said it, my name is Philly Beats You, and I will see you guys in the next video. Just let me know in the down in the comments below what your favorite Pokemon is that you can find in the Grand Underground. See you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.